I received a request to talk about 3D sketching, ways to think about it, ways that it might become a little bit easier. So I will strive to do that now. Uh, 3D sketching is inherently difficult in any system and there's not really a way to make it easier. The problem comes because you're trying to display something in three dimensions on something in two dimensions. And uh, that's just gonna be hairy no matter what you do. So for instance, right, I might make a line and uh, let's make the line parallel to say our Z axis here. So I want this line to go straight up and down and it just looks visually like I'm doing a pretty good job and then I turn my view and it's not at all what I was envisioning at all. So let's talk about uh, how we can better control 3D sketches and actually have things go the way that we want. Uh, I'll start by zooming out and you can see we have a sketch plane here and the sketch plane is on our y and x axes or our y x plane so if i'm creating sketches the things that i make no matter how i move my mouse no matter how i move my mouse they're all going to be on that plane but we can change our default sketching plane if I hit the tab key, now I can have my sketches be parallel to the ZY plane, right? I add elements, and even though they might look like they're going all over the place, we're all sitting comfortably in that ZY plane or YZ plane. Again, hit tab, and I can change it again, so now I'm on the ZX plane. So if I hit tab, I can cycle my three planes. I also can come up here to say cycle sketch plane and that works too. I can uh, go right on my origin and create something and I get an auto constraint, right? This is that little lock with the arrow on it. That of course is a direction constraint. So we fix the thing in a specific and particular direction. So maybe we'll want to make a set of bike handlebars to go through what a reasonable 3D sketch looks like. Now I want to assign this a length. So I'm going to go with, uh, let's go with the length of nine. I'm in inches right now, so we're going to say nine. And of course I want to sketch something in this direction, but because we're still on our XY plane, I certainly can. And it comes out, right? So we have our handlebar, we want to curve it and then curve it all the way back around. Now, handlebars will have a smooth fillet transition, and so you can certainly use arcs. Uh, I think tangent arcs might be the easiest to use in the 3D environment, right? So you can add arcs onto things, but uh, with the way that we constrain our directions and everything else in three dimensions, I think connecting lines with fillets is a easier way to replace arcs. But now I want to go down. So I'll hit the tab key and select a plane uh, that is parallel to where I want. And I'll sketch in a downward direction. You'll notice my auto constraint is applied and it has gone in the direction that I want. So using the tab key to change your directions around really is going to be uh, critical to having things come out the way that you intend. And this is just a way that's uh, easy to control. So I'll lay out my sketch fillets now. And that came out the way that I intended. Let's say that we want to have a fillet of two inches here. So I'll say two and two. And so we're going to assume that when we add our sketch fillet, right, it's going to start at this point and end at this point because it has a radius of two. And then I want to have, let's say, a radius of four. Oh, and you'll see that we're not connected there. So we'll make sure that I connect my sketch up. And now I can grab my dimension and say I want it to immediately transition into something that has a, a radius of four. So we can say four there. We'll give a length on this line and make it eight because we have, of course, four and four and then I'll give this an ending of six so can I click and drag things only this length 
So I'll add my coincident onto there. And now I should not be able to click and drag anything because we had an approach where we constrained as we went. Next, we'll go to fill it from here to here. And we'll give it that two that we planned. And then we'll go up to four. And we'll go from here to here. And from here to here, just like that. So we've gone through being able to control directions with lines. We've also been able to add curvature using sketch fillets. And of course, if we wish to use regular arcs, we can, but I think that it's a lot more challenging. So where, when possible, I like to use uh, sketch fillets. From here, we'll deactivate the sketch. We'll go on the YZ plane and make a 2D sketch. Now we can define our uh, profile as being hollow by adding another circle. I'll give this a diameter of one. Or we can leave it as is. You'll notice my sketches aren't showing up, so we'll hit Control Shift K, and that toggles sketch visibility. And I'll go with a sweep, and I'll select my sketch here, and select my path object here. And of course, you'll see that I sketched half of a handlebar. I'll use the mirror function to create the other half. Now that's another thing when you can use mirrors and patterns and things like that in 3D sketching, being able to do half the work really does make a big difference. So that's another tip, do half the work if you can. Uh, I can also use the shell function if I would like to uh, uh, create a, a hollowness that isn't based on a sketch, but based on an item in the tree. If I think that's more preferable, I'd probably do a sketch if I was doing a serious project, but many ways to accomplish the same thing. So this is a simple set of bike handlebars and hopefully an easy way to think about making 3D sketches.